healing home friends. <laughs> it has been one of those days, you know, those days where um, it's just been one of those days. We're going to call it a toddler day <laughs> because my toddler has been out of control and uh, almost 38 weeks pregnant. It's just, I just, yeah, it's just been one of those days. It's such one of those days that I completely forgot to pop on here and let you ladies know that we have a very, very special guest today. And so I apologize for not letting you guys know in advance, but today we get to um, talk with um, Angela Sackett from Everyday Welcome, and I'm very excited to hear what she has to say in kind of conjunction with her blog post that, oh, I think this is a couple weeks old now, but she talked about meal planning and daily bread. Um, and this goes with our routines and organization series that we just completed in September. And that series, as a reminder, is based on 2 Timothy 2.15, and I'll read it for you. It says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly hand handling the word of truth. And so all of our, my guests realistically live out simplicity while passionately pursuing Christ to the end result. Oh, it said that I had poor connection, but now it looks like we're back on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but the end result of this whole blog series was to try to clear out the clutter in our lives so we can focus on the best thing, which is Christ. So Angela focused on meal planning and daily bread, and I'm going to bring her on now, and we're going to hear from her. So let's see if I can make this happen. It's our life. <laughs> I know. That's that's one of the fun things about live videos is that it's actual life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, hopefully my dog will not start doing that again. <laughs> How are you today, Angela? I'm so good, and I clearly got the dress code notification. I like your shirt. <laughs> oh, look at that. Well, I, <laughs> I didn't even notice, so thank you. <laughs> joining me today and I kind of just did a quick introduction about the series and um, what you wrote on um, and so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell people um, who you are uh, your, you know your family your blog your website everything that you do so we can kind of get to know you a little bit awesome well first of all thank you thank you thank you because I have loved just connecting with you and connecting with the other ladies in the series and um, so are you getting a lot of feedback on your end? Or are you okay? Um, I'm not getting feedback. Are you? Okay. Well, I'm hearing it, but now that seems better. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> as long as it's not irritating anybody else. Um, I am Angela Sackett. I write at everydaywelcome.com where I use recipes and DIY and devotional tips um, to encourage women to open your heart and open your home to know God's love and then share it with other people. Love it. Where are you from? Now? What kind of part of the country? So I'm from Florida. I own that first because that's where I was born and lived until five years ago. And then our family moved to the Jersey Shore, which is a huge change, but it's been a really good um, blessing too. And let me see if I let me try taking out my headphones and see if that changes anything. Okay. That, okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh no! Oh no! Weird. Oh, okay. I'm going to try popping these back in one more time just because it's not hear you better. And it, we'll see if that fixes it. You don't hear it then. Technology. Wow. <laughs> oh, now I can't hear you. you can <laughs> well, at least you can't. I'll live with it. Um, and you asked, I have five kids, um, ages 11 up to 22, and the oldest two sons are married. Um, we have one in the Army, one who is a, a fitness trainer. Our, we have one girl, our daughter, Anna, which I'll share a little more about her soon, but she is on the other side of the world right now. 
Well, that's actually a great lead into <laughs> my first question because your your article sort of started with this um, explanation about where your daughter is at right now. So why don't you share a little bit about that? Because it kind of sounded like it inspired some of what you wrote. Very much. So um, I have one girl in the middle of four boys and she's the exact opposite of my personality, which God gave me as such a gift because over the past few years, she's really become my best friend. And um, she about two years ago felt like the Lord might be calling her to take a big, bold step. And um, when she graduated from high school, she began, is it, are you getting feedback? No. Are you okay? Okay. Yeah. Um, she began preparing to um, travel to the Philippines where she is um, studying as a midwife and serving in a missionary clinic and watching her prepare for that. She's, um, she's 19. She's very introverted. Um, she is the opposite of her mama. I've never met a stranger and I'll go anywhere. And um, she little by little over the past two years has just been whittling away what was not important and, and selling things and giving things away and um, making space for God to take her somewhere else to do something in his name. And so watching her in that journey had really inspired me. Okay. What is it, Lord, that I need to let go of? Um, and for me, that a lot has come in the area of food, which maybe sounds silly, but, um, I grew up in a family where food was always abundant. It was always the center of every meal. And that's still, I mean, the center of every gathering and that's still kind of the way it is for me. Um, but learning sort of like, okay, Lord, how can I embrace that gift? How can I bless other people with food? Cause that's what I write about primarily. Um, and that's how I live, but do that in a way that's also nourishing to the soul and that is nourishing to the body. So, um, learning to eat healthier too, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you said something in your article and I think it summarized everything so well. So I'm going to read it. Um, and then maybe we can, um, talk about it too, which you kind of addressed it right there. So maybe we can just let it go, but I still want to read it because it's so good. Um, you said, so how do we embrace tangible blessings, enjoy creating beauty in our homes and celebrating what's on our tables while still keeping our primary focus on living out our calling as Jesus girls. And I love that you said Jesus girls at the end. That was, <laughs> I, that for a second. I was like, oh, that's okay. I like that. I like that name. Um, but how how do you live that out in the end? Yeah, I think one of the things that I've noticed is we live in a culture that's built on excess and we kind of glorify that. Um, I follow a lot of like home blogs and I love looking at bloggers that show food or how they decorate their homes. And one thing I notice is that over time, it's like, how, first of all, how are they buying all this stuff? And secondly, where's it all going? Cause I just gotta find a place to stick it. Um, and the same way with food, like how often is my refrigerator full of stuff that I don't, I'm, we don't eat, we throw things away. And I was very convicted about that. Um, but I think if we start to first focus on feeding our souls, meaning opening up God's word, digging into it, spending time in prayer, journaling what he's teaching us, having conversations with others about that, that's our primary focus. We're getting filled up on him. We're lavishing others with his love. And then having something beautiful in our home or having a pretty meal on the table, that's the frosting. It's not yeah. the main course. And if I don't have it, it's okay. Or if I need to uh, write, I just started a whole 30 today and I can share about that if you want, but it's going to be a, a 30 day period of saying no to some things food wise. Um, but I am going to be digging in deep to time in the Lord because that's where I first want to be filled. Hmm. I think so much like falls into place when we, we, we dig into the word and we are actually our affections are turning toward Christ instead of toward the worldly things. Everything just seems to fall into um, place when our hearts are where they're supposed to be. Yeah. And I have to tell you, so I mentioned my daughter, what's been mind blowing to me is, um, and I didn't really get into this in the post. So I just share one little thing for the past five years, um, having moved to a new state, 
she has not had a friend locally. She's had some acquaintances. Um, we've been to different churches. We've tried out different youth groups, but God has not just blasted her with a godly heart friend. Um, she has been able to dive into some really precious relationships with older women because of her mama, um, discipling some younger girls. But really, it was five years. She has a best friend who lives far away, um, mm -hmm. two actually. But nobody close, nobody that she had coffee with and giggled with. And, um, but she used that time to really just dig, dig deep into the Lord and in growing in him. And um, silly little things like she loves plants. She loves to grow plants, and she's turned me into a plant lady. Um, she, she is now, after five years of just saying, Lord, I'll wait on your timing. I want you more than anything. I want you more than a, a best friend. She's wow. living in a house with 10 women who are head over heels in love with Jesus, who have oh. left everything to go follow him. And they live in a house full of plants. <laughs> and it sounds so silly, but it's like the Lord, he wants us to fall in love with him. And he may or may not give us those little extra things. But man, when he does, his attention to detail is like, <laughs> what are you, what are you um, doing, Lord? We're most satisfied how does that, oh, I can't think of the phrase. We're most satisfied in ourselves when we're most satisfied in Christ. Yes, I think it's yeah. something like that. And that, that story reminds me of that. Yes. Well, even if we're not satisfied in this world, we're most satisfied when we're satisfied in Christ. So I love that. Um, so let's dive a little bit deeper into this a whole idea of, of eating good food for our stomach as well as spiritual well-being. Um, and you talked about four things. Um, and kind of looking at my notes here. <laughs> you good, because I don't have mine things. printed out. <laughs> what? I said good, because I don't have my notes printed out. So you keep us on track. <laughs> I have it on my computer screen. So. <laughs> um, Okay, so you address four aspects of eating good foods, both for our stomach and our spiritual well-being. And so let's just touch on those four just real quick. Um, I think the first one was eat what is good for your body, heart, mind, and soul. Um, and then you had hydrating and plan for success and seek accountability. So we don't have to necessarily address all four, but if you want to just speak to a couple of things that stick out in your head to maybe dive in deeper for our, our viewers. Um, sure. So the first thing I will say is I think it's really important for us to think of ourselves as students, both um, of the word and also of our bodies. So God gave us this body. He put us in this body. Um, we all, I think, have a tendency to either obsess about it in a good way or to, to um, what's the word, neglect it. Oh, I'm yeah. not going to worry about that. You know, I'm, I'm a spiritual girl. I don't work out, yeah. whatever that is. Um, and so taking some time, um, that's, I'm doing, I said, a whole 30. This for me is just a short period of time to sort of reset and think about what does make my body feel good? What does give me energy to take care of my kiddos, to love other women, um, and and do that don't be afraid to do that don't be afraid to read and learn you know about nutrition or um go to the gym my husband and I it's kind of like our new date night is to go to the gym together um take what you all get uh, take what I can get right <laughs> um but don't be afraid to do that think of yourself as a student learn what makes your body feel good what nourishes you um, and don't be afraid to let go of what doesn't too. Um, I've been in seasons of life. Winter is really bad for me where I'm eating all the things, but never really full. And I'm craving more and more of whatever that fun Christmas or Thanksgiving -y food is, but I'm not feeling full. So I guess that's the first thing is, is nourishing. And then spiritually too, um, podcasts are great. Books are great. Even Bible studies are great, but the meat is the actual word and the time asking the Holy Spirit to teach us. So um, don't settle for just, it's great. If you can stick in a podcast while you're cleaning or listen to a sermon, my boys and I do that um, together in the mornings, um, but don't settle for that. Press in harder. Ask the Lord, reveal yourself to me. Teach me what you want me to know as a woman through your word, through your time in prayer. Um, hydrating easy he is our living water and as women we gotta carry that water bottle <laughs> um 
Yeah. And meal planning. That's huge. Um, I grew up in a family, again, where food was sort of central. Um, but it was a lot of like scrapping together and having leftovers. And did we make use of that? And I learned pretty early on. I'm now past baby stage and, and um, juggling naps and all that. But if I didn't have some sort of plan, lots gets wasted, including my money at the grocery store. So um, taking some time at the beginning of the week, I like to do Sunday afternoons when everybody's doing their thing and pull out a few cookbooks and my Pinterest boards and um, just make a loose plan. I have a chalkboard in my kitchen that when I keep up with that is great. Everybody knows what's on the schedule. Um, when they get bigger, I mean, I'm talking eight, nine bigger, they can cook, put them to work, give them, have them make the salad, you know, Oops. Um, and the more they do that, I think the more our kids take ownership too of what goes on our table and in our mouth. So. I've even found that my toddler can do some things. He can. A hundred percent. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. He's a little, little, pardon? Yes, his attention span might be short, but when they're little, that's the time when you start to shape their palate, too. Um, we used to sit around the table at lunchtime, and I would get out spinach leaves and hummus and chopped up tomatoes, and we would just literally roll up little, you know, spinach roll-ups, and that's that was lunch. Now we've now they can cook their own eggs and what have you, but <laughs> it starts when they're little like that, yeah. yeah. He just ate okra last night, and he loved it, and I was like, wow. Oh. And I loved that point. Um, yes. Do you find that that's something helpful, even um, even that you use regularly? Oh my word, yes. So one thing, I'm because I blog and I have a Facebook presence and Instagram. I like to use that for sort of external accountability rather than, yes, you know, we like to show off if we make something yummy. But for me, it's more about somebody else going, I'll do that too, or I'll hold you accountable. Um, I do have a, a friend that I, I've never met in person. We just connected online and um, we're trying to get to bed earlier and get up earlier. And so Monday nights and Thursday nights, we just shoot each other a text and say, Hey girl, praying for you tonight. I'm headed to bed. Or how can I pray for you this week? Um, and it's amazing. And then also my daughter-in-law, the reason I decided to start this whole 30 round is because I, my daughter-in-law posted uh, yesterday, I think, and said she was going to do it. And I'm like, I'm in, let's do it. So just having that little bit of somebody else to cheer you on. Did you drink enough water today? You know, whatever that thing is that the Lord's convicting you about um just share it with a friend or two even if they're online friends and say hey can you hold me accountable it really does help you know that it does very much so i also find that the, the, the groups there's different facebook like whole uh yes. whole 30, you know has the facebook group and even those even though they're long distance distance connections they're still meaningful yeah so much really help hold me accountable and sharing ideas, equipping each other. So um, I think I'm going to share a little bit about a, a study that I wrote where we formed a private Facebook group. And I was so excited to watch the women ask questions of each other. And I know you guys do that here in this group, too. Um, who's got an idea for this? Or what, how do I do that? Or um, anybody got a recipe for, you know, it's sports night. I'm on the run. What do we, what do I make? Whatever that is getting ideas from each other. Like what a blessing that we can do that sometimes with people will, we might never meet in real life. So let's talk about that. It's called the 40 days day study, uh, refined, refined journey. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Refined so journey. Yep. Talk about that and kind of what it yes. is. So it kind of was inspired, uh, two things, one by my doing Whole30, which I, is a great secular program, um, but it's very secular. And as I was doing it, um, the first time I did it with two of my, well, my whole family, actually, and two of my teenagers kept saying, they almost get it. They almost get it. This, there's this concept of fasting and of um, yeah. true nourishment. And so that, and then I also was just kind of digging into um, this idea of the number 40 in the wilderness, 40 days, or 40 in the Bible, 40 days in the wilderness. Um, and just wanted to sort of pick that number and say, okay, I'm going to take 40 days for me and dig into 
what does God's word actually have to say about food, about nourishing ourselves? And oh my word, it is so rich with symbolism, um, how many festivals and feasts in um, times of restraint in the Old Testament and New Testament are connected to food, but teach us spiritual principles. Um, so Refined Journey turned into um, a six-week um, study where we I send out meal plans um, that are, for the most part, I would say, fit the Whole30 template, meaning that you can trust that they're clean. Yeah. Um, but not in a legalistic way, use it if it, if you want, toss it if you don't want, but they're paired with a weekly Bible study where we kind of dig into ideas of nourishment and restraint and fasting and feasting. And, yeah. That sounds, that sounds fantastic. So is that available on your website? It is. Yes. Um, and I have a link if you want, I can drop in the comments. If somebody's interested, I can send you a free week of it to try it out. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, I'm so excited. I just joined um, something called Teachable where it's, I'm converting. It's been an email course, but it's getting ready to go onto a platform where it'll also have a weekly video um, that people can, yeah, so. <laughs> oh, very fun. Yes, please drop that link so it's available you for it. Um, I think we covered everything we were going to cover. Wow. I love getting to chat with you. It's so much fun. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to share um, about this this whole idea of meal planning and daily bread? Um, I just thought if anybody wants personal encouragement, I am happy to, you know, you can message me or if there's questions here in the group. If you, maybe you might have to tag me if I miss them, but I'm yeah. happy to just encourage um, what my journey is. It's not, I don't speak from a place of like, I got it all together and I'm superwoman, but we're all walking this walk together. So how can we encourage each other? I'm happy to share however I can. And I would love um, if you guys that watch would just pray for my girl. Um, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd love to share her link too, where people can kind of follow her journey. She's blogging and emailing and. I actually had it over there. And <laughs> I, I did see that, that link and we do drop it. And it, it um, she's done a very good job of putting that together. So it's beautiful. Please check it out, ladies, if you're watching the playback, because it, it, it looks like she's going to be on an amazing journey. I think it's um, why I've loved connecting with you and finding this group is that God has something, he does something amazing when we connect, I mean, Titus too, you know, older women teaching the younger women, and it works in all ways. Like, I've loved seeing what you write and what you share and how you encourage women. I think you're maybe a couple years younger than me. <laughs> Well. <laughs> um, but I love that. I love how he works in all those ways. And, and that's my prayer is that just as women have poured into my girl, that she'll be able to encourage us to wherever we are in our mom journey and in our personal journey. So, Well, why don't I end? Um, and I know some people think this is really strange, but here's the deal. Uh, we can pray wherever even on Facebook Live. Yes. <laughs> it might be a little awkward, but that doesn't mean that it's not a good thing. So I love I, it. And can you remind me, is it Anna or Anna? Anna. Yep. Anna. Okay. Um, we're going to pray for Anna and just briefly, and that's how we're going to close this. So um, put aside the awkwardness of praying on, on Live. <laughs> and let's just um, um, pray to our creator. Um, so dear... Dear Father in heaven, I just thank you for Angela and the ministry that she's um, having um, and the, the fact that we get to connect and over all of these miles and technology is just incredible. And so I thank you for, for that blessing that you've placed in our lives. And I specifically today want to lift up Anna as she is on her journey to the Philippines. And we want to praise you for putting all of these ladies in her life. Um, ten different ladies in a house of plants. It just sounds like you've done <laughs> incredible work. So we want to um, we want to praise you for that because you do big miracles and you also take care of the little things of our hearts that mean so much to us. Um, that you know us and it's just amazing that you take care of the little things and the big things. So we want to praise you for that, and we also want to. Um, ask for your guidance for Anna as she is on this journey, that she can dig deep into the studies that she needs to yeah. dig into. It sounds like she'll be doing some, some school as well. Um, and also just give her the, the grace to, um, 
to minister to those around her. Uh, we thank you for what um, you're doing in Angela's life as well as Anna's life. Um, we praise you for all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so and much. This playback will be available on um, both the, the group page and the Healing Home business page. And then it'll also be on the Healing Home YouTube as soon as I get to it. So make sure that if you're watching now, you can um, just note that you can also watch the playback afterward. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. You have a wonderful day. I'm so grateful for you. <laughs> I'm grateful for you too. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye, Rachel. Bye.